get that. I'm at a loss. Just say the word. I'll handle this myself. So tough. <laughs> Feeling all right. I'll handle this. Do I have any way of dealing with him? Let us proceed. Why does everything look so soft now? My thought right now is thin a lot of this. And hope that Duma misses when he attacks us. I can leave this to you. Watch me go! Not him. Didn't have majoring there, I guess. No, oh, you did. You just can't reach. Okay. Fair enough, I suppose. I can handle this. are you so hard to kill? 16 plus it's that silver shield. Fuck you, dude. So magic actually would be the best thing against Just you. Me. 
give them to me. At your service. Silenced the mage guy with um, May. I forget that she has that. I've never once used it, and I should be. All right, wish me luck. Please miss. That's huge, honestly. Fifty-five. Times. Does that take the? Does that take his turn though? Because if it does, that maybe that just means that we focus on these guys. You know what I mean? Crits for me today. Never stood a 
chance. You're so Allow me. <laughs> you lack experience. Ready and waiting. This move that he's powering up, I'm banking on the fact that that takes his turn and that he still doesn't get a normal attack on top of it. gonna survive. This swamp is killing me. It's absolutely killing me. My peeps can't move. Silencing him means that he'd only have his shorter range one. Can he be silenced? Fuck you. Fuck you, game. Seriously, fuck you. Fucking... Mm. Thank <laughs> you. 
going good. It's technically a flyer, right? Get your crit, bro. Get your crit. 50-50 chance. I think May's dead. Yeah, we need you out of the swamp so that you can actually move. that after. Nothing. You need to heal. Would you survive with a heal? Not really sure. I have some mages who could have gone in. But maybe we just play it cool for a minute. Thanks.
next turn, we can probably give that a try. We need to get you out of this swamp. It appears That's it. I'm done for What are you supposed to do with that? To like what are you supposed to do with that? Fuck you. I had to cut out an expletive that I didn't want to keep in. to heal. Since when? Okay, this is the enemy phase where he killed... No, it's not.
need a break. What I really need is alcohol. Okay. Break's over. Still partially relying on luck. Let us proceed. I'll handle this myself. Got that on a one. You need to heat. All right, I'll handle this. You don't know when to quit. Love it when that crits. Need to heal. Allow me. I might not want to attack on him just because of that six percent crit. I don't think it can hit. Okay. So that might mean that it's Alm's turn. All right, let's go. Question is, is descend scale count? Better not risk it, if I'm being honest. Um. Okay, so is this gonna get nullified then? Okay. Um. Okay. In that case. Wait. Just Not that. Heal you up. <laughs> um. Cool. You can get into melee range. You're better than I thought. 
Yep, you're good. That's such bullshit. One percent. Forsyth and Valbar were lost in this fight. Cry. So it locked Forgive that one me, in. Sir Clark. I'm no use to you. <laughs> Feeling good. All right, let's go. It's over, Duma. Or Coot. Fernand. Miller. Even my father, they and countless others, lost to us, tainted by your precious power. But that chain of tragedies ends here. My heart is full of thanks for all you've given man, O oh Divine Duma. This didn't happen before. Is this indicating to me that we just beat him? Are we about to crit and win? Without yours and Mila's bounty, Valentia could never have existed. They would never have been born into this world. Never tasted joy I think we sorrow. won. Otherwise, so this dialogue please, would have happened. Do not suffer any longer. The first time we did Let it. All of our pain end here. Allow your great and weary we soul to rest Like, right. why, why did we have to lose foresight there? There's never been a single other instance where it locked in the RNG like that. But at what cost? I'm pretty displeased that we lost Valbar and Forsyth. So be it, Arm. I leave Valentia's future to you, her hero. Take from us what lessons you will, and shape her into a land to remember. 
Make her strong like Duma, and fill her with Miller's love. Let our grave mistakes be warnings of where not to tread as you lead her forth. Now we shall sleep. And never shall you disturb our slumber. They really wanted us to lose people on that map. That was a huge spike. This is where you were. Huh? Oh, hey, Celica. You aren't going to be late to your own coronation, are you? No. Of course not. I'm just still wrapping my head around sitting on your father's throne. None of it feels real. It isn't my father's throne. This isn't Sophia any longer, Om. It's the One Kingdom of Valentia. And you are going to be its first ruler. Celica. Please, don't misunderstand. I don't bear him any grudge. Not now. I just think he was a very sad man. Perhaps if I'd been there with him, I might have helped him change. If I have any regrets. It's that. I know what you mean. Neither of us got the chance to stand by our fathers. If we'd been given the opportunity to learn more about each other, maybe things would have turned out differently for us. Perhaps it was the same for Mila and Duma. Hmm. I wonder. They've been fighting for centuries, right? Seems like a lost cause to me. Oh, that's a terrible thing to say. <laughs> uh, sorry. I didn't mean any disrespect. But they're at peace now, you know? Asleep. Sibling rivalry. Together. Nothing more than that, yes. right? They'll look down over this new Valentia forever from their mountaintop graves. And the trees. Do you know of them, Om? They say that where divine dragons sleep, sacred trees take root and grow. Wow. Must be some trees. In time, yes. They grow for hundreds, even thousands of years. Who can say what Valentia will look like once they've matured? Will man's endeavors continue without the grace and strength of the gods? They won't continue on their own. We have to make it happen. We'll forge a land where we can do just that. All of us. Together. That sounds lovely, Om. And you're right. I know we can do it. We can. And we will. I think Mila and Duma gave us one last gift. The strength to trust in our own abilities. Anyway, it's time. Let's go, Celica. Gladly. They get their happy ending. Thank goodness. <laughs> Audio's a little bit weird right there, but... So the long war drew to a close. After countless sacrifices, at last, a new peace dawned in Valentia. Was it inexorable fate that saw this conflict erupt? No man or woman alive can say. Only one truth is clear. War will come again when man grows proud and slothful once more, and its flames will devour one and all. Raging until the very earth itself lies scorched and bare of life. For whatever madness lay in the hearts of gods, a darkness deeper still beats wild in the hearts of man. Okay. 
There we are. Is this gonna venture up to the big screen? I think it does. Yes, good. <laughs> okay, four turns on the first one, six turns. That was quite the difficulty spike at the end there. I remember it being difficult the first time I played it, but the first time I played it, you have to remember, I played it on just normal classic, not hard classic. So um, that was tough. And um, I was down to the wire. We used all of our rewinds. <laughs> there was a lot of random elements going on there. I lost Forsyth. Well, I lost three units, some of which I rewound. I don't remember who they all were, but Forsyth I lost twice to 1% criticals. Mycin died on a 6% critical at one point, and I can't remember what Valbar died on. But um, Valbar and Forsyth actually died before the end of this game. So technically there is another act after this, and it's sort of like an end game sort of thing. If I remember correctly, there's some like giant dungeon that we can go and explore in the next act, and we can also finish up some of our uh, side quests. Um, so when we're done with this, I mean, this is the end of the story, right? But there is gonna be some more content after this for the post game. I don't know how much of that I'm gonna do. I don't remember how robust the end game stuff is, um, but as long as I'm having fun with it, I'm probably gonna complete it, so we'll see. Um, but, um, we'll be able to go, there are three different Waters of Revival, so we'll be able to, to get back Forsyth and Valbar. Unfortunately, if they have end screens, I don't remember if this game has end screens for each of the characters, it probably does. We're not gonna get that for those two, unfortunately, which sucks. It's too bad. I might just look it up in the next episode when we go into the end game so that people know what happens to them. Um... Because technically they'll they'll still be alive because we're going to revive their dead asses. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm honestly pretty disappointed that I couldn't keep everybody alive. Um, we were down to the wire there, and this was three hours, three hours on that last map, and to have to start that over is what I I don't know if I have it in me, man. <laughs> That's three hours three hours lost if we would have just failed there um which it's, it's it could have happened honestly it could have happened um, um i'm glad we were able to pull back matilda there at the end too it wasn't fair that she died there i think i could have avoided that one on that turn if i had um if i had used fortify instead of just physics on alm but Ooh. Ooh. Vocals in this song. Okay. This game has really good music. Touched by the war that they waged. Noma. Battles 2, victory 0. After spearheading the unification of the Mila and Duma faithful, Noma became the new sex high priest despite being adored by a congregation numbering in the tens of thousands. His friends attest that he retained his playful, light-hearted nature all his life. Those are a little bit too damn slow and I cannot speed them up, I tried. Mycin, Battles 8, Victories 4. As the One Kingdom's new chancellor and right-hand man to King Alm, I, good sir, King Alm I, good Sir Mycin, worked tirelessly towards the kingdom's restoration. Despite his formal standing and title, the king and queen continued to love him like a grandfather. He, I mean, he raised Alm and he, ra he raised um, Celica for part of her life. Tatiana prayed that Zeke's memory would remain hazy, <laughs> and the two eventually did live something of a happy life. Though, they were parted at times, Zeke always returned to Tatiana's side in the end. Those are way too slow. Just 
put the whole thing up and let me read it, man. Silk. The war left Valencia with many wounded. And Silk traveled to the former Regal to heal all that she could. Her exact path is difficult to retrace, but anecdotes survive across the continent, telling of the countless lives she saved. The fires of war had illuminated the dark recesses of Zeke's memory, but he loved Tatiana too much to burden her with his torturous past, so he chose to bear it in silence as they lived out their lives together. So he did get his memory back and he just kept it to himself. Wow. Jenny. After falling in a most unlikely love, Jenny wed a man no one would ever expect. As for whom she married, exactly, no one can say. <laughs> Whenever her friends asked, she replied, only with a smile and an enigmatic laugh. What? How do you keep that a secret? All right, Conrad. Post-war, Conrad put down his lance and took up a quill beginning a long career as a civil servant. Following Meissen's retirement, he became chancellor. Cool, shepherding Valencia's prosperity for years. Despite an endless chain of suitors, he remained single all his life. Now he probably secretly married Jenny. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Final resting place, the altar of doom. I'm sorry, Valvar. Oh, it feels bad. Katria. Having rescued Est as planned, Katria returned home in triumph. Tales of her further exploits line the pages of Arcanea's history books. Cool. <laughs> Est? Successfully reunited with her sisters, Est returned home in triumph. Tales of her further exploits? Line the pages of Arcanea's history books. I mean, the sisters. I mean, they all kind of like feel the same space, huh? Luthier. Painfully aware of the inadequacy of his magic, Luthier journeyed across the sea. What he did there is unclear, but stories tell of a steady stream of angry ruffians who later came to Valencia with a bone to pick with an eccentric mage. Maybe he went and helped the sisters. Atlas. After returning to the mountain home where his brothers waited, Atlas resumed life as a lumberjack. Though his work defending the village from bandits continued to win him admiration, while retired from the army, he was always first to aid the queen in times of need. Good man, Atlas. Good man. Sonia. Sonia searched for a cure for women turned into witches, which she was looking for for her sisters, took her across the land. Her trail ended in a remote region, after which she was never seen again. Rumors fly, however, that shortly thereafter, a new witch took up residence in Nui Baba's abode on Fear Mountain. Okay. Not the type of witch we're thinking, though. Too bad her sisters died already, though, huh? Lucas? Lucas joined the One Kingdom's Brotherhood of Knights and after retiring, founded a school where he devoted himself to his students' education. His calm intellectual mien won him many friends, and he never longed for companionship throughout the rest of his days. Bowie. After returning to the Priory on Novus, Bowie weathered a trying courtship with May until the two were wed. <laughs> a trying courtship. Children came soon and in plentiful number, giving the pair a host of new excuses to argue. Joy takes curious forms at times, but Bowie was a happy man indeed. I bet he was. May would be fun, I, I suppose. 
Paula. Having rescued Estes' plan, Paula returned home in triumph. Tales of her further exploits line the pages of Arcanea's history books. Jesse. After successfully founding a mercenary kingdom in Greece's former land, Jesse then proved successful at ruling it. In times of strife, he worked with Alm to secure peace. Tales of his valor are told even now, in which he's reverentially, reverentially called the steel amidst the sand. Kamui. Oh, another one who died in that map that we rewound. Intrigued by Jesse's idea, Kumui helped to found a kingdom of mercenaries and lived there happily for a time. In the end, however, his wanderlust prevailed. One day he went for a stroll and simply vanished, never to be seen again. Good for you, Kamui. I'm sorry, Forsyth. He was right there up until the end. A 1% crit. Final resting place, the altar of Duma. So unfair. Clive. 1%! Clive was appointed the first captain of the One Kingdom's Brotherhood of Knights. His talent and honesty made him popular with commoners and nobles alike. And under his leadership, the knights flourished. He and his lovely wife were objects of the people's envy. And affection, I'm sure. Okay, Python. Python accepted a knighthood from the One Kingdom, growing into a new, into a new man who worked diligently, almost as if possessed by Forsyth. Oh, <laughs> sadly, he died a few short years later while fighting to suppress a rebellion his wounds claiming him while he was far too young. I wonder if that would have changed if Forsyth was still alive? Like, maybe those two would have done something together? I don't know. Gray. As a member of the One Kingdom's Brotherhood of Knights, Bray worked diligently at restoring the continent. He applied himself equally to winning Claire's heart <laughs> and beat Tobin out in the end, as he was heard to say... Pick the guy with the big heart, not the pretty face. Ha! He won out, huh? Hell yeah! Claire? As a knight of the One Kingdom, Claire worked hard on behalf of the continent. In time, Grey's tenacity won her over, and she became his wife, and then a mother. But Claire never stayed grounded. She and her Pegasus continued to race across the sky. Gawkers be damned. Ah, Gray and Claire got their happy ending. Ha, <laughs> suck it, Tobin. <laughs> Sorry, Tobin. As one of the most scrupulous knights in the One Kingdom's Brotherhood, Tobin spent his life serving his friend King Alm. The king, in turn, placed a great deal of trust in Tobin eventually granting him both a title and his own castle. All right, Tobin, well done. Good for you. Delthea. After the war, Delthea decided to lock away her magic and pursue a wild and happy life as an ordinary woman. Oh, cool. <laughs> she found herself the perfect husband at court, but made a point to return to her village often where she would liven things up with tales of her brother, who was clearly making short work of bandits across the sea. Saber, I love Saber. One of my favorite characters in this game, easily. Along with Jesse, Saber helped build the foundation for a new kingdom of and for mercenaries. He continued working as a sellsword uh, for years to come and aided the One Kingdom on many occasions always with his stunning bride by his side. Which is who, exactly? Good for you, Saber. Good for you. I feel like he should have been, like, Celica's, like, personal guard, man. He earned it. Leon. 
Dealt a grievous blow by Valbar's death, Leon disappeared for a time before returning to join the One Kingdom's Brotherhood of Knights. There, he fought with the strength of a hundred men and later served as an instructor to new recruits, contributing greatly to the Order. Mm -hmm. I bet you he would have gone wherever Valbar went if he was around still, but he's not. That's too bad. May? May returned to Novus and resumed her work at the Priory with Bowie. The two bickered endlessly, before and after their wedding, <laughs> while managing to raise many children during the pauses between barbs. Both of them often remarked that they couldn't possibly be happier <laughs> with all the bickering. Matilda. She cast her armor aside and wed Clive. She was rarely seen in public after that, having perhaps chosen to support her husband behind the scenes instead. However, her legendary exploits as a knight are sure to live on forever in Valencian history. Yeah, she was, she's more talented than Clive ever was, that's for sure. <laughs> Cliff? With the war over, Cliff bid on farewell and vanished. With some speculating, they left for a new continent. Decades later, a young man, claiming to be Cliff's son, arrived in Valencia to serve the king. The boy was said to have a tremendous gift for magic, which is funny because our Cliff never touched magic. Apparently he can make a really good mage. Faye. Unable to get Alm out of her mind. Oh, I'm sorry, girl. Still, huh? Faye returned to her old life in Ram Village. Eventually, she met and married a suitor who claimed he did not mind her pining for the king. <laughs> Though her habit of vanishing without notice for days at a time continued to worry her new family. What are you doing, girl? Are you, like, going and, like, throwing rocks at Alm's window? And he's just like, stop! I'm in love with Celica. <laughs> You're not getting any. Not from me. Celica. In marrying Alm, Sela became the first queen of the One Kingdom of Valencia and aided her king with wisdom and compassion. Best girl in the whole damn series. Believed by the people to be a reincarnation of Mila, she was universally loved for her work fostering peace within the nation kingdom. Lovely. And Alm. As first king of the One Kingdom of Valencia, Alm spent his life restoring the continent to glory. He would be remembered fondly by later generations as Saint King Alm I, who cast off the gods' oppressive yoke and founded a dynasty that would last a thousand years. That's awesome. Eventually, that dynasty would uh, come to see the events of Awakening. Fire Emblem Awakening. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. The end. Three hours later. Awarded for ending the Age of Gods and ushering in a new era. Cherisher of Life, awarded for surviving countless tough battles and learning the value of life. Valencia's Conqueror, awarded for making it through an extremely difficult situation. That's putting it mildly. That's putting it mildly. So... A foreign trading ship has arrived at Zofia Harbor. Renowned Conquer, awarded for gaining renown in not just Valencia, but the world over. Okay, so at this point, um, it looks like we would be heading down here to figure out what's going on there. Um, but, so, there's more to go here, as you can see. So technically, this is uh, noted as Act 6, so pretty cool stuff. Um, there, so there is an end game here. Um, in the next episode, um, obviously this was the finale of the story, so um, 
I'm just going to share some of my thoughts, but in the next episodes, we're going to look at what the end game is. We're going to finish up some of the side quests, etc., etc. We're also going to revive our two dead comrades, and um, I will read off their endings for you in one of the future episodes. So um, you won't want to miss that because technically, they're not dead, and so their story continues. How dare you, Gain? How dare you? I have waters of revival I can use. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So, anyways, um, this is one of my favorite stories in Fire Emblem that I've played and experienced. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses um, has some really, really, really good story in it, but I think this one tops it, in my opinion. Um, I really, like, I think my top threes right now are probably this game, Awakening, and Fire Emblem Three Houses. I think Awakening, um, I don't know how I would rank them, to be honest. I don't know which one is better than the other. Those three games I really, really like for very different reasons. All of them offer something different. Um, but this game, it's really a lot to do with Alm and Celica and their story, and just a lot of the plot elements surrounding that. I mean, it's just a lovely sort of like romance story in, a, in, a, in and of itself. And then we've got like this wonderful cast of characters, like, e like even Berkut and Renea and stuff. I love it. Rudolph great addition like it, it's a great story and it has some really really fascinating and awesome story beats so for that reason this is easily one of my favorites in the series and i highly recommend it to any of you that last map is so hard and there are moments where you're going to be so frustrated with this game um you saw the moments where i got frustrated um but you know it all comes part of the package <laughs> And uh, I was playing on hard, so you could always play on normal to make it a little bit easier on yourself. But um, yeah, this this game had some really tough moments. It was challenging. It had a good story. It had great characters. Um, just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And Celica is the best girl in the series. Fight me. Fight me. Convince me otherwise, I dare you. Um, but yeah, in the next episode, um, we're going to be going into endgame stuff for this Act 6. So um, if you want to see that, um, you know, tune in. Tune in. So thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. I'd like to give a very special shout-out to my patron supporters, Darren York, Seventh Son, ZTD, and Anur. If you also would like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below. Thank you.